G'day guys, I'm here in Brisbane and I am just about to meet Glenn Stevens, who is a Xamarin employee. Uh, he works for Xamarin University and he's just turning up, so here he is. Hey Glenn. Not bad. Come into my little office over here. Take a seat here. Squeeze up. So, um, tell us a little bit about how did an Aussie from Brisbane become an employee of Xamarin? Because we don't have any in Sydney. Oh, they used to have one, uh, Craig Dunn, who's a uh, evangelist with, or he's, he works in the documentation team at Xamarin. Uh, he works over in San Francisco now. And there's a, a few Aussies there. There's one from Melbourne that's just moved over too. So, the, there's a few of us. It's um, I, I always have to bring over Tim Tams and Nutrigrain, oh. just the, the stable supplies. It's quite handy. But uh, I've been working with the Xamarin products for quite a long time. So the, the company I, I founded a few years ago was the first Australian Xamarin partner. And I just really love the tech. Right. And I, I thought, well, the only place I'm really going to go full time is for a company I really like. And, and Xamarin was that company. I was really happy when they had an opportunity for the, the Xamarin University, uh, com which came up at the end of last year, because I really enjoy training, really enjoy making good product and combining the two, working for an awesome company. So Xamarin is just a, a cool IDE. What is Xamarin University? No, Xamarin's more than a, a cool IDE. <laughs> I need to send you to Xamarin University to get some, uh, an overview of that. But there's lots of cool tech in there. Xamarin University is a place where people can go in and they can uh, learn how to use the tools. They can learn the fundamentals of mobile uh, app development. They can learn things like web service design, how, how to integrate that into their applications, how to do cross-platform well learning the patterns and, and the implementations uh, that you'd see that the common problems that you see in mobile applications, how do I do use, how do I use maps, how do I use uh, particular facilities uh, and how do I do that in a manageable and maintainable way. And we do that with um, small class sizes. So it's not actually just a video lecture like plural site. It's mm -hmm. actually you get that dedicated focus. You can ask a question, get an answer. And that's very important to a lot of people. Um, so Alec, uh, who's here with me today, has actually been through the Xamarin University. So before we step on to Alec, um, can I just ask, what would make a company like Xamarin, building software tools for developers, want to create a university? Like, um, uh, I know it's an education platform, but most uh, software companies don't think of creating a formal channel like a you know educational university. You are, I. Oh, I'm, I can't understand the, their, their thought process. I can't explain it on their behalf. Um, what I do know about Xamarin is they listen to their customers and people just ask for training a lot. And they ask for training from the, the source of truth, the source of knowledge. And it makes sense for them for, to, to do that. Um, before I joined Xamarin, I was running uh, Xamarin um, workshops on using how to use the Xamarin tools around the country. And I found there was a, a, a large need growing at that point in time. And there's definitely a market need for that. And, um, and they do it really well. They've got a great documentation team. I, I absolutely love the, the stuff they write. Most of my favorite authors have actually ended up working at Xamarin. I have this uh, motto that I almost live by that, that anyone uh, with some intelligence who works with the Xamarin space probably will end up working for Xamarin. So when you um, kick off your learning of Xamarin and you download and you start playing, at which point do you, you, know, do you join the university? Well, the, the university is for people who are looking for education and they want to understand. It's amazing the, the kinds of people that, that come through it. There's a, a range of people, people who are wanting to get into mobile. People who have been developing for a, a long period of time. Like the, It's not uncommon to see people who have been working there for, in the industry for 20 plus years um, who are joining up because they want to learn mobile. Because mobile these days is development. You, you can't expect to, to do development without having having to affect phones in some way. Even if you're doing web development, that'll hit it. But the reality is people want native experience. Okay. All right, so let's uh, talk to Alec and find out what it's like. What is the time commitment and the, and the dollars commitment to start doing this university? Um, the, the time commitment, um, you, you're able to spread it over... Uh, I don't know if there's a, a limit, but you can you can spread it over uh, quite a long period of time. I mean, I I did uh, maybe three four hours a week, uh, maybe a little bit more than that when there were modules that I specifically wanted to do as soon as I could. Um, so you you could you could take it quite quickly. You could take it take it slower if you want to, uh, because they cover so many different time zones. They've got local people. They've got people in all all, all different cities in the world. You've got the option of um, 
you can do it during working hours and plough your way through it. If you've got work commitments, you can do it in the evenings if you want to or early in the mornings. So if you want to get through it fast, you could do all of the above. And what were those first modules you did? The first ones were really good actually um, and uh, they, they give you an introduction to the mobile paradigm in general before they even start you actually coding. Uh, that, so there's a whole model just introduction to mobile um, that, that covers a lot, of the, a lot of the conceptual differences that you wouldn't necessarily think of if you haven't done mobile before. When you do um, like remote working with someone like a long Skype call for a day or something, it's fairly brutal. What's it like, you know, um, is it a long webinar or is there homework involved, what's it like? Uh, well the, the ones I did, they, they tend to schedule three hours. Uh, I think I had one that took the full three hours. Uh, a lot of them, we covered the material after a couple of hours. But one of the things I did find, because it's live sessions and you've got, it is a fairly small number of people there, but th there are a number of people there. So you do get some conversations and some chatting afterwards. And I learned, often I learned as much from listening to the questions other people were asking and what the answers were as I had from the course material. Uh, Glenn, and what are the dollars involved in doing uh, Alex University? Well, a typical student would pay $1,995 US per year. So you get a subscription service and you can use it as much as you want. So you could do three hours a week like Alec was doing or you could do how much? Oh, well, absolutely. Um, in three hours you can do whatever you need. Some people just actually go, I want to learn these particular aspects, learn them and then just spread the, the rest of the courses over a period of time. It just fits into a life cycle. Awesome. Lifestyle. Okay, and what's, uh, what's for the future now? Uh, more content, more courses. Uh, I've just been working on some, some courses for Test Cloud, which are about to come out as well. So people doing automated test, testing of mobile, mobile, phone, mobile phone apps and, and how they can use that. There's some other great courses that I, I can't really speak of that I know that's coming out as well. Um, and, and our plan is to, to, to double the, the, the amount of course content that we had probably a few months ago. Right. And I just uh, found out that I thought you might mention Charles Pretzel yes. um, joined. Uh, what's the story there? That's big news. Well, he, he joined um, the, the team like it was, it was a win for the Docs team and, and people were just amazing because he wrote the original Windows book and I think there's so many developers that learnt how to code from him and it's interesting. I've got the, the his Turing book at home on my bedside table reading that at the moment. And it's, it's exciting. I've not met him, and I'm looking forward to meeting him uh, next month in Evolve. Awesome. Okay. So with that, uh, this is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV. Did you get all that? We'll take the SSW TV quiz and test your knowledge now.